The West in uh, Montana especially was built on what can now be called pretty colorful history. Our chief historical correspondent Andy Curtis is live in the studio with more. Andy. Thanks for that, Camilla. Well, one thing that made the West so wild was the larger number of brothels that popped up in every gold rush town heading out west. And, well, Montana's capital was no different. Prostitution in the Old West was as common as prospecting, saloons, or dying of dysentery. Brothels could be found in almost any gold town as men spread towards the Pacific, and Helena was no different. In fact, a letter to the Independent Record from a concerned citizen after the closing of one popular house of ill repute once stated, any town without a whorehouse is a stupid place to live. That's, um, uh... Uh, that, that's, that's their view, not, not mine. In those gold camps, there really was never a red light district. The women just intermingled with the population, and because the population was almost exclusively male, um, they didn't really care about city ordinances and that kind of thing. And, and nobody really would until 1885, when a past territorial law allowed cities to regulate prostitution. This pushed the ladies into the first red light district, which spanned from the caretaker's house at the foot of Reader's Alley, down to where the Blackfoot Brewery currently stands. Then in 1917, to help prevent the spread of STDs to troops during World War I, a federal law was passed that outlawed cribs, small prostitution houses. Now all this really did was drive the ladies of the evening further underground, and they started operating the upper rooms of boarding houses along what is now modern day Last Chance Gulch. The big joke is that uh, there, were, there were signs in the windows that said furnished rooms, but nobody said exactly what were furnished. Well, someone who did know and made a lot of money from it was Big Dorothy Baker, who was one of the last madams to operate in town above what is now the Windbag Saloon, taking over from Ida Levy in 1952. And her operation might still be in business if she didn't try to fix up the neighborhood. And so she, um, she got this $500 urban renewal grant and it brought her a lot of publicity. And so um, the powers that be decided this just can't happen. And they raided her uh, for the last time in 1973. And as rumor has it, this raid accomplished a little bit more than just shutting down Dorothy's. She had a famous cigar box and she would take checks from legislators and people who, you know, were her customers. And uh, she never cashed the checks. And supposedly she kept those checks for collateral. And the famous cigar box never did surface. Now whose names were in that cigar box may never be known, but it's pretty safe to say that in Helena's long history, the collective cigar box of brothels must be, well, pretty big. Now join us here tomorrow as we talk with Jefferson County Museum historian Terry Atwood, who believes she solved the cold case murder of one popular working girl on Helena's Last Chance Gulch.